everybody welcome back to my channel today I want to share with you five easy and delicious crock-pot recipes these are five of my family's personal favorite and most of these take less than five minutes to throw everything in the crock pot and go links to all of the full recipes will be in the description bar down below I've always been so intimidated to make chicken and dumplings, but years ago, Make It by Tiffany D shared her crock pot recipe for chicken and dumplings, and I made it and have never looked back. They are so delicious, even though everything comes from a can. It's so simple, and it's very flavorful, um, and it's just one of my favorite things to make when the weather turns chilly. So that was three cans of cream of chicken soup that I put in and five ounces of water, which is approximately half of the can. So that's really easy to measure it out that way. Then I add in salt and pepper to taste. We like lots of pepper in our um, chicken and dumplings. So you can see me just like pouring it in instead of sprinkling it. Then you just stir all of that together and I try to get a lot of the lumps of cream of chicken soup out, but if there's any left, that's fine. It'll all melt together. Then you add a diced onion, and normally I dice my own onion, but if you want to be really quick and easy, I just bought the onion already diced from the store, and that really makes it very convenient. Adding a little more salt here, I guess I thought it needed more. And then you add your chicken breast. Um, I think the recipe calls for three to four, but these are two chicken breasts that are huge, so it was plenty for us. You'll let that cook for five hours on high, and then you'll take the chicken out and shred it and add in a whole can of biscuits. So I just cut the biscuits into bite-sized pieces and add them in after I've added the shredded chicken back. And then you cook that on high for 40 minutes to let the biscuits cook through. This is the best winter comfort food. It's so good. Next up is barbecue pork chops, and you start off with a jar of barbecue sauce. This brand is called Stubbs. It's a well-known barbecue restaurant here in Texas. Then you add a whole jar of apricot preserves. If you've ever made ribs, then you know that barbecue and jelly go well together, and um, we use grape jelly on our ribs. But this is apricot. And then you sprinkle on a package of onion soup mix. This is where all the really good flavor comes in. And the last ingredient for the sauce is garlic powder. Um, you just sprinkle that in, stir all of this together. I love a recipe that only has five ingredients, and that includes the pork chops. So this one is super easy to make, just like all of the others. Now I'm adding in the pork chops. Um, I use thick pork chops. These are thick boneless, but you either need to buy bone in or the thick cut in order for them not to dry out. Pork chops can dry out really bad in the crock pot. So be sure and watch your cooking time so that you don't overcook these and getting the right cut of meat really helps as well and they should be nice and tender. I'm just making sure here that everything is covered with sauce and then I cook these on low for four hours and mine are cooked through. This is a newer recipe for us but it's already one of our favorites. I just served it with a side of green beans. Now for Mississippi pot roast. If you've ever been on Pinterest, I guarantee you've seen at least some variation of this recipe, but this is our family's, I would venture to say like number one dinner recipe. I know it's one of my husband's. Um, everybody in my family eats this up. Both kids, we love it so much. And I had a little helper in the background for this recipe. Do you see the little baby feet kicking in the back? How cute is that? So I use a packet of ranch dressing mix, a package of au jus gravy mix. Most recipes I've seen call for about five pepperoncini peppers, but we like our food really flavorful, and these don't add a lot of heat. They don't really add any heat at all, to be honest. They just add a ton of flavor, so I throw a lot of peppers in here. I would say three-fourths of the jar that I'm holding I will put on the roast. And then some call for water and some don't, but I pour all of the juice from the jar of peppers in as my liquid. It always comes out perfectly, and I'm telling you, it is so flavorful and delicious. The final ingredient is an entire stick of butter. That's what makes it really good. And then I like to cook mine on low for eight hours for the most tender roast. If you have any leftovers, be sure and save them for a sandwich the next day. I was going to start off by saying that this sausage and potato casserole is the epitome of comfort food, but as you can tell from this video, comfort food is my favorite thing to make and what we eat a lot of. I never claimed that these would be healthy. So you start off with 16 ounces of sour cream, you add in a cream of chicken soup, 
pepper, some salt, some garlic powder, and then some onion powder. And then I just go ahead and stir that all together so that the seasoning is evenly mixed and all the potatoes are coated. The recipe calls for an entire bag of frozen diced hash browns, and then I just stir to coat in the mixture. And the last thing is two cups of cheese, and I know that sounds like a lot, but this girl right here can never get enough cheese. The recipe I'm linking says to cook on low for four hours, but I find every time I've made it, it takes at least five to five and a half. Once that is finished, you just cook your sausage in a skillet and add it in, and you're done. This chicken enchilada soup recipe is wonderful and you can make it as mild or as spicy as you want. You start off with red enchilada sauce and you can use mild or medium depending on your preference. Then you add a can of Rotel which also comes in mild and spicy versions. A can of chili beans with mild chili sauce. Of course there's no need to drain or rinse these because you want the chili sauce that comes in the can. And then we have a can of black beans which you do want to drain and rinse and then add to the soup a can of whole kernel corn, and you want to drain this as well. You stir that all together, and then we can start adding our seasonings. You'll start with ground cumin, then some paprika, seasoned salt, some pepper, chili powder. I've also added cayenne pepper in the past just to make it really nice and spicy. I would say one to two teaspoons would be good if you like your soup really spicy. Then you add chicken broth for your liquid. And again, I only added two chicken breasts to this soup because these organic chicken breasts that I buy are massive. So they come in a pack of two and it's always plenty for all of my chicken recipes. I cooked mine on low for five hours. Then you'll take the chicken out, shred it, add the chicken back, and then cube an entire package of cream cheese and add that in. You just let the cream cheese melt for a few minutes and then you're able to whisk it into the soup. Then you can add your favorite toppings. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for all of you busy ladies out there or for the ladies that just don't like to cook or don't have time to cook. I'm sorry there wasn't more detailed video or pictures of the last steps of some of these recipes, but I'm normally at the gym at night and my husband completes the recipes for me and then my kids eat earlier than we do. So um, he wasn't really willing to video himself, uh, you know, shredding chicken and chopping cream cheese, but that's okay. You get the idea. Let me know if you've already tried and love one of these recipes or a new one that you cannot wait to try. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.